Dear students, today we shall talk about how Nagas governed their villages in the past. Every person in the village belonged to a family. Every family belonged to a clan. Several clans would form a kel, and several kels made a village. Every village had its own territory consisting of forest, rivers, and land. So how did each village independently govern themselves? How did they plan their activities, maintain law and order, and defend their villages? All Naga tribes differ slightly in the way they run the administration of the village. And it can be broadly classified as the democratic system, the chieftain system, the angship. Today, we shall be visiting four Naga villages to understand better how these systems worked. This is Poilwa, a Zilian village. They followed a democratic system of administration where Kel representatives or clan elders would come together to make decisions for the village. General agreement and consensus was very important to take any decision. Mr. I. Daniel Zeliang is a village elder and he explains to us how the village functioned in the past. Ours is a federation type of governance. So the Morong act as the lowest layer. From there the family dispute or any other like uh, moral issues are being taken care of. Then comes the care level. If anything happens in between two Morong, then the four Morong will come and take the decision. If two kills are involved in a dispute, then the, the whole village will be involved. And the whole village, intellectual, the representative from the village will come together, they will give the final decision. The kill representatives are of reputed character. One should have the reputation of good morale, integrity, and they should be able to soldier any sort of events. As for the Aos, it was slightly different. A generation of several peer groups called Putu Menden governed the village. Each Putu would rule the village for roughly 30 years. At the end of their term, the outgoing Putu would vacate their position and a new Putu Menden takes over. To understand this better, Meying Sadang Jamir, a village elder, describes how the system was followed in his village, Mong Sen Yimti. <laughs> Now we shall focus our attention on another form of governance found among the Konyaks, the Angship. Every Konyak village had an Ang or a king 
who ruled one village or many villages. He was extremely powerful and his word was law. The villagers or commoners under him would offer free service in his field and also offer produce of their fields to him as a kind of tribute. Kimang Ang, the Ang of Wan Ching village, tells us more about Angship among his people. Kung yak to hale, every village the shutu pustiti pe ang ase, tamor pustiti pe ang ase. Kendo shutu pusti ang khan to hale, tamor pusti ang khan lokote triputi kena enoga thaka itiatak. Ang korte itu khan to hale triputi ang pasjun auru ngang tinta. Itu priest kan doh le. Itu kan logo te meeting kuri kena pusti ete kuri bo manung katib le cabo. Nole ba itu pusti kita doh le peace pona bo. Tapi ko abe taikan beraki advice tibo. Ang beraki itu lobo ang beraki advice tibo taikan be itu mani bo ino hari kena final decision doh le ang berai final decision di. Bagi pelak tu ang laka pacah holi bi ang hoblu no ni bo. Kendo ang bera rani kun loi itu hi itu laka pacah hi abru kingship hobo. Pal administration dia itu tay laka tu quality talents thaga ang kita holi whole pusti bera appreciation tiga itu ang tu tu holi amakan muri cahili bi itu ang tu nemuri li pal. Similar to the Konyaks, the Simis follow a chieftain form of governance. I This is Jevuku Rotoka, and he is the chief of Natanyu. He is referred to as Akakao, which means village chief. Among the Simis, whoever establishes the village automatically becomes the chieftain. Dr. H. S. Rotoka, a Simi elder, describes how the Simis follow a chieftain form of governance. When one is interested to establish his own village, he has to collect his people. Number one is his spokesperson, Chocho, we call it Chocho, then Awu, priest. And then Akakao has to arrange the departments of the village administration. Whatever he plans, he will tell his Chocho spokesperson and he will announce in the village. And suppose there is a dispute, judicial justice, no? Chocho will assist the GB, chieftainship, to settle the cases like that. As a chief, I have to protect my people, especially enemy, he has to protect this. If there's any sickness, he has to take care of the, his villagers. He will announce that about the festivals, no, about the ganas. During famine, I, he will provide the food to the people like that. Chieftainship is hereditary in Simi society. The one who established the village, his son, his grandsons will inherit there. No other people can inherit there. Dear students, by now you must have understood how in the past, governance of Naga villages ranged from near dictatorship to extreme democracy. Today, it's a different story. Every recognized village, whether big or small, has a village council. It is the highest body at the village level, and it controls the overall administration. The councils are headed by a chairman or a village elder and is assisted by council members. It is through these village councils that local governance and customary practices exist 
side by side in modern Naga villages. I want to leave you with a challenge. The next time you visit a Naga village, please ask the village elder how the village was governed in the past. <laughs>